Hello, well here is the filming of the demise, thankfully, and the good riddance of my ground source heat pump system. It's been running since, on and off, since about 2008. It looks a bit like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in a funny old way. Now, that white pipe is a, a takeoff. I've I've actually got a temporary tank heating heating my place at the moment. This has been absolutely nothing but trouble since the day it went in. It has cost us a fortune to run, and it just has been faulty and very costly. Even running it on economy 10 electricity. I hope I'm not speaking too simplistically. I'm just trying to be audible. This has um, been making heat for too long. Well, let's try and get some focus here. Sorry about my camera work. I've just turned this on just to uh, take its last bit of film before I turn the lot off and remove it and replace it with an oil boiler, fossil fuel. Although you are burning fossil fuel somewhere. Look at that. There's its total power consumption. That's its operation time. It, it only lasted that long before it completely packed up. Start counter. There's so many settings, it's just so tricky to, to learn. So, it's got a Thorin apparently uh, have gone pop now. I can't confirm that and I wish them no particular malice, but that is what I believe. It's got a, a dirty great big six kilowatt immersion heater in there, a Copeland excuse me, a Copeland scroll compressor in there, the compressor started packing up, you hear it making a noise like a compressor pump would, but uh, of course it's making the noise but not actually heating, not making heat, so of course that noise, uh, it took a long time to realise that uh, it was so inefficient as well. Um, so yes, that space there will very, very shortly be occupied by an oil-fired boiler. We had a company come out to look at swapping all of this out and they wanted to put in a very peculiar looking tank, only because I don't think they understood how to plumb this in. This, uh, this is a very unique form of plumbing in here. It looks a bit like something from Willy Wonka's distillery. But um, yeah, I can just say that uh, these are just so extraordinarily expensive to run. That six kilowatt immersion heater in there, that is used apparently to come on once in a while to either make additional quick heat or to also um, blast it with a, a, a good amount of heat to uh, get Legionnaire's disease and the like out of the system. But what I'd recommend is get a timer on that because that kicking in at six kilowatts will burn one heck of a lot of electricity, even on economy 10, that is very expensive. Now, excuse this camera work as I quickly shuffle outside. I cannot see how to pause this camera without it uh, losing the picture. So one sec. Now, here we are. Let's just walk around outside because anyone saying, oh, sink it in a borehole or just put a little bit of ground or use a little bit of, um, put it sideways or do something like that. Now, this field here has got over 600 meters of pipe in it. All of that field there has got deep trenches with meter wide sand filled coils of pipe. That is all in this field. 
that is a big field. There's my lovely little dog running. There was thought that and down here is where it all switches. There was thought that would perhaps not be enough. So on top of that, we put pipes all the way down here and we have got pipes all the way down there, just along the ridge there, on to the left of the dip, all the way down to the woods. All of that is piped with coils like, like sunglasses all laid down. There she goes again. And that is just, and it goes around the corner there and back to that tank room. So that is the size of our field. There's over a thousand meters of buried pipe in the ground. And still, we, it cost us a fortune and still we really didn't get very far with this system. I believe it's about 2008 it went in and thankfully today, now I've done this film, I can pull the place out and make this a better planet and get rid of what has been a nightmare. Our underfloor heating, yeah it was okay for a little while. I had so many teething problems it was ridiculous. Um, we've got those two buffer tanks, 500 litres a piece. One of them is for storing um, hot water for bathing and the other one is for storing as a buffer water for the underfloor heating. And with that water, um, when you press a zone, you can cool off instantly uh, some hot water to warm the room up. All I'm going to do now is take the flow and return off that ground source heat pump and I'm going to connect it straight into a nice oil boiler because that oil boiler, Tilly, that oil boiler is just going to look after those two tanks. It's going to heat our underfloor heating. It's going to make our hot water. We don't need economy 10. We don't need to be stuck on that crazy immersion system. And we are just going to be able to get on with our lives now without the massive cost of topping up the underfloor, uh, the ground source heat pump and doing all of that work. Now, I, I do welcome comments. You're obviously going to say I've got the wrong system and blah, blah, blah. Everything, everyone is, uh, of course, welcome to their opinion. Otherwise, we'd have a dull old world. But for me, the joy of getting away from such very, very high electricity bills, which is the reason why I thought I would be getting, um, I went to Grand Source. I believed it was the sustainable way to do it. I believed that uh, my electricity bills would be low. I've got everything working on timers as well. So I was trying to do my heat generation for the buffer tanks, mainly uh, off peak. Uh, to try and reduce the bills. In the end, I also had the, um, well, not in the end, in fact, for quite a long while, I had the um, immersion also on a timer. All of these things timing because the, the, the cost of running it was so inordinate. Uh, I've got a friend who literally lives down the road. He had um, a similar system in and uh, he was only too glad to. In fact, he sold his house uh, within two years of building it and uh, built another uh, house with a different system. There are quite a few of us like this. Um, maybe it was just my bad experience, but I'm sorry folks, for now, it's oil-fired heating. I know what it does. I can now also shop around and just go for a normal tariff electricity. With a normal tariff electricity, I don't have to worry about these high bills. I can buy my oil when it's at the cheapest rate. I've bought a 
a 3,600 litre oil tank, bunded of course, so that I'll be able to buy the oil when it's at its best price and I can just top up those two buffer tanks as and when, keeping my lovely underfloor heating and going that way. I'll leave the coils in place under this ground because there is a lot of it. You cannot tell me that I am perhaps a little bit short on my underfloor, or my underground coils. Anyway, here we go. I'll stop my rant and you'll say, my God, what's he going on about? But I'm just trying to help. There's probably a couple of people out there that will watch this and will think a lot longer than I did. And that's maybe my problem. I didn't think long enough. So no biomass pellet boilers, no weird funky stuff for me. I have been looking at these things, but I just don't think we're quite ready for the jump. I have got a heat exchanger in a small flat that I've built for my friend and that works as air conditioning in the summer and it reverses in the winter and gives him nice uh, warm air in the winter. So yeah, not all against it, but now is not the time for me with this blimmin' ground source heat pump. In fact, um, I, I, I know another guy who's a property developer and he put a gas boiler in his house. He just was not convinced either. Maybe you are convinced that's your right and I respect your right. All the best guys and girls. Thank you for bearing with me on my funny little rant. Over and out.